talked to my CPA, and he said, look, I've been involved in this thing for 30 years, and right now it's at 4%. So I said, oh, okay, that sounds really safe. So we put whatever it was, $3 million into it. And wait, wait, I'm missing you. Into what? Bernie Madoff? You put it into Madoff's hands? Well, no, we gave it to my CPA, who has actually had a feeder fund with Bernie Madoff. We did not know that. Oh, so your your CPA ripped you off? What's that? Your CPA robbed you? Well, I guess you could say that, but his money was in Madoff, too, so he lost everything he had. Oh, so he was a true believer. He got suckered by the con man as well. Yeah. I'd never heard of this guy's name before until such time as... I so, you, wait, Darren, hold on one minute. You live here in the San Francisco area, correct? Yeah, I'm a local painting contractor. I just work so here. You, lo you lost your life savings because of this bum? Everything. And my parents' oh, money, and my sister's money, and my half of my grandmother's trust. Was oh, my God. I'm sure you'd like to get your hands on Bernie Madoff's neck. Oh, what are you going to do? I had to pull myself up by the bootstraps and go to work seven days a week, 12 hours a day. I got no choice. Well, my parents you mean all you had, to start, you had to start from ground zero all over again? Yeah. Oh, that's awful. How, how old were you when you lost everything to Madoff? Uh, let's see, 42. And the, the, the biggest problem was that once that happened, it was the worst economy ever. So as soon as I lost all the money, there was no work. In the construction, oh, right, especially for a painter, because the housing trades were, were were near zero. So it went it went right off the deep end. So I wasn't able to just come back, you know. Uh, but but like right now, the housing market is booming. Obviously, your business must be great, right? Uh, it has turned around in the last two years. Yeah, you know, what I'm worried about, Darren, is that everything's cyclical, and you know the housing market cannot stay up forever, right? You know that thing's going to blow up in another year after after the next election like you said as soon as bingo exactly they're going to blow it up so it collapses under the republican president whoever it is so darren how are you planning for the collapse meaning this is interesting we're all talking about it like it's in a, in a test tube but it isn't we know that the big money is going to blow it out again and steal billions of dollars again the average person is going to get really really screwed again what plans are you making for that inevitability well, I have my money in real estate. I'm not in the <laughs> market. I won't touch it. Wait, wait, hold it. You said you have it in real estate? Oh, you have it in real estate. Yeah, no. Yeah, but, but, but Darren, I understand that. But if things are good now, what happens if the, mar if the housing market collapses? Well, for me, I own two houses in a small place in San Pablo, California. They're small little rental properties. I own them outright. I don't All right, so you can't you can't get hurt no matter what happens because you own them. So there's no mortgage on them. So that was my decision. I'll never let it happen again. Now they I can see. rent, regardless of whether they go up or down. Yes. Well, I think Darren, that's the essence of what the words "real estate" means. People forget it means real estate. It means something real. Tangible, yeah. I know where it well, is. Well, that's good. Yeah, you know where it is, and you. By the way, here's another thing to remember: you can always live in it too. If things go bad, I'll never forget what happened to me. I had a rental house, a small rental house at a certain point later on in my life before radio. And I owned the house. Well, things went turned on me. I had to move into my rental house. It was a great humiliation for me. But you know what? I thank God every day that I had a, a clean house to live in, to be very honest with you. It wasn't fun falling back into a rental, but I did what I had to do and then claw my way back out of it. I've had to reinvent myself, Michael, and... I am truly humbled by where I am today. You know, it's kind of like God's taking care of me when I couldn't myself. I did all the legwork, but somehow I ended up back on my feet. Well, you're a strong man. You know, you didn't give in to self-pity and you didn't give in to alcohol or drugs. So you uh, were able to pull yourself back out. Not everyone is as strong as you or I are. Many people give up. They can't take it. They just can't fight anymore. And they go by the way of the wayside. That's what the what happens to people. They can't do it. So thank you very much for calling. It's an interesting. See, this is human human. Uh, how shall I say the the stories we're getting today on the show are what used to make me listen to talk radio. Human stories, human relations. I mean, this is what I like doing. This almost borders on what I was doing for a while a year ago of the lifestyle. Remember, I would do a lifestyle show.
This is kind of that, but very political in that way. And the more you listen to it, the more you learn, I think, especially people who never lived through this kind of stuff. But if you don't know what we're talking about, you will know soon. Let's put it to you that way. Let's say you're a, uh, I don't know, a 20-something-year-old trust fund case, or you are working for Google, or you're working for Yahoo or Twitter, and you think it's all a joke, and you think it's just, oh, those conservatives, I don't know what they're talking about. You will also very soon learn what a scam is when it all comes crashing down and your stock falls by 50%. Because that's going to, how could a stock like Yahoo be worth as much? How could the stock of Google be worth that much? How could Facebook stock be worth that much? Do they produce a product that has that much value? No. So it's again a speculative bubble. And eventually these things will level off, in my opinion. Nothing keeps going up forever. Nothing. Whatever goes up must come down. K E R N, I love Kern County. Tim, welcome to the Savage Nation. What's your topic? What's your story? Uh, I lost everything January 08 due to uh, the housing crisis. Um, I put in 60000 down. I knew it was going to crash in 2005 because I bought my first uh, condominium in 2002. And uh, my ex-wife. Well, but, but, but you mean you didn't get out soon enough? Is that what you're saying? No. Uh, I well, Of course not. Of course not. Because you're not one of the big guys. Only the big guys know when the bottom's going to fall out. Since they're the ones who pull the bottom out from under all of us. We don't know. Who knows what's, when they're going to pull the plug. My guess politically is what I said earlier. My instincts are fairly good. I don't know if I'm right or wrong. I don't have any access to these people. But knowing what I know about politics and seeing what they did to us during the Bush years and how they gave us Obama by pulling out the bottom of the uh, housing market. They crashed the economy. Then Obama comes along. Remember when he ran, how believable the man was. Do you remember that election? I do. I remember what he lied about and what he said he was going to do. Of course, he lied about everything. He's a psychopath. So he, he's a, uh, 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 okay, don't get me started. I almost did it again. He lied about everything he said he would do. He didn't do, except the far left social programs. That's the only thing he kept true to. Wrecking the military and destroying the social order of society. Other than that, he's as bad as the rest of them when it comes to the uh, economic stuff because he is controlled by the same moneyed interests who could care less about the, the, the social structure of America. They don't care about the social order or the social structure. So they don't care what he does with all that other stuff. All they know is he's giving them free reign to rob the public again. That's all. And the same thing is happening. So what's going to happen, my guess, and I could be right, I could be wrong, who knows, is they're going to do it again. Will be good this year, in uh, this year, 2016. He'll continue to do his social engineering, destroying as much of the society that he can do, no matter how he can do it. And then the groundwork will have been laid for the next housing collapse because they're using the fiduciary instruments all over again that gave us the last one. And, of course, there are many, many Madoffs running around who have taken people's money and invested it. They're going to lose their money again. And then, of course, we have the, the other situations that are almost identical. It's history repeating itself. I'll be back in a minute. I ran all the way. Oh, I'll be running home soon after the show is over. I can't believe these three hours flew by. They're almost over. So tonight's the debate between the commie and the criminal in New Hampshire. Like, I'm supposed to care who's a bigger progressive. You know, like, that's the new badge of honor. Who's a bigger communist? So, you know, my, my, my statement that the motto of the New Hampshire uh, Democrat Party should be live free and get high is not too far from the truth since now Ted Cruz is talking about addiction all of a sudden. How long have I been talking about saying whatever happened to family values? Why are they not talking about drugs? All of a sudden, the, now Ted Cruz is talking about addiction from a distant family member. Great. Here's another story I see here on MSNBC. Bill Clinton's impact felt on the grope line. Oh, I mean the rope line. Well, Bill Clinton's impact felt on the grope line. Oh, he's running the velvet rope now. Who gets in to see the wife? That's why I joke, rope, grow. Very funny. Bush says, proud mom campaigning for me today. You're not kidding. She is. If he drops out, she'll crush him all together under a steamroller. The first one-on-one -on -one debate of the 2016 cycle it shows you how pathetic the Democrat Party is. It's like, who is a better socialist, communist, anarchist, Bernie or Hillary? They want to, want to get the credentials now up there. Oh, he's going to beat her up there. We know that. That's very good. Because it's a state filled with drug addicts and poor and tax dodgers. That's why they're, they're generally to the left. 
of, uh, of center on the Democrat side. The landholders, people who own a house, in other words, are Republicans. Anyone who pays a tax is a Republican. What does the word progressive mean? It's such a stupid word. It's a new word for communist. That's all. Progressive. I'm a proud progressive. What does it mean? Take from those who haven't given it to the idiots who didn't earn it. That's what it means. Okay, so I did what I said I wasn't going to do because I couldn't resist because it's coming up. I'm going to watch ABC tonight, the second installment of the Madoff thing. I cannot wait. The ads I could do without, but all right, that's part and parcel. I found a thing to do during ads now as I run over to the computer and do email. With the clicker, I turn this. <laughs> I wish I could get it. What's that thing they have where they take the ads out of the TV shows? Tebow? Is there a football player, a baseball player named Tebow? Or the thing you it cuts out the ads? I don't, ha I don't have the patience. I generally don't have the patience for the technology involved. Last caller of the day, Rich on KLIF. You have one minute or less. Fire away. What's your topic? Michael, I'm calling reference to the, uh, the mortgage crisis. Uh, for about five years, I worked for the FDIC in Dallas. I was a member of a team of about 10 professionals that specifically dealt with bad loans that, that nobody else wanted when, when we closed over 500 banks. Um, we did our job so effectively that we had two loan servicers uh, withdraw from their contracts because we were too tough on them. They were... Uh, so you worked as a governmental agent to keep people in their houses, correct? That is correct. So I'm saying that's a good thing. You know, here's the problem. You've got textbook conservatives who are going to say that's a bad thing, that if a person gambled and lost, they should be in the gutter and go live in a cardboard box. I'm not that kind of personality, as you can well uh, imagine by now. And, and, and Michael... As a conservative, I was getting it from both sides. My liberal. You see, there you are. You're a conservative who worked for FDIC, and yet you're proud of the fact that as a conservative governmental worker, you kept people in their houses. That's what I'm talking about is that kind of subtlety. That kind of nuance is almost unheard of right now. It, the lines are drawn like they, the classic conservative says, go in the gutter. You gambled and lost. We don't care about you. You know, free market, free market, free market, free market, free market. Good for you. Glad you did it. Good night. Savage.